Hi everyone, it's Rax. We're continuing our build guides with a brand new set, the Spirit of Erishur Corpse Fighter Witch Doctor, which has been completely reworked by Blizzard. It came out on the PTR in the first iteration. We all left some feedback. It needed some changes. And now the set is much better. It's much more powerful. It's much more durable. And in Season 25, for sure, without a shadow of doubt, without really much difficulty at all, it will clear solo 150, so it will max out the game. This build is a very nice build if you're a newer player. If you haven't played the Witch Doctor in a while, it's very easy to play. It's very easy to gear for. Uh, there aren't any crazy in-depth mechanics. So this build dominates. Let's go over it for all you Witch Doctor players. You should be really excited to receive this brand new set. So the two-piece. Summon a permanent spider queen connected to you by an infested thread. Enemies in the thread are infested. The attacks against infested enemies inflict the same damage to all enemies. The spider queen is commanded to where you cast your spiders. Corpse spiders now spawn with health. The corpse spiders now spawn with health means that they are targetable by enemies. And what that means is, is when you're walking into a room with all your spiders, it means that some of the monsters will attack your spiders instead of just all going for you so they can act as meat shields for you. So what this means is we want to infest everything with the thread in order to deal maximum damage to everything around it. So essentially we're going to be like doing a merry-go-round. We're going to make a huge pull, going to do a merry-go-round, and we're going to throw spiders and just uh, dominate that way. The four piece. The Spider Queen leaves behind webs that last for 15 seconds. They slow enemies. Enemies are infested while on the web, so anyone on the web is automatically infested. And you take 75% reduced damage while on the web and for 4 seconds after. Stand in the webs and you're going to survive. Enemies stand in the webs, they're going to die. And the six piece is our generic massive multiplier for our corpse fighters so we can deal major damage. So. Chewy has an amazing guide written on Max Roll for you. I'll post the link down below if you'd like to read the written version and go into a lot more detail here. But there's some fantastic news right off the bat for itemization for this build, which make it very easy to put together. Area damage works for corpse fighters, but it doesn't work in combination with the two-piece set where infested enemies take equal damage, which is what would actually make area damage valuable. So in other words, we just aren't really looking for area damage. And if we aren't looking for area damage, we might as well take zero, that way we don't lag the game. Okay, so area damage you don't need. That's good news. Uh, the other thing about it is because we have grave injustice and we, we, we should be killing a lot of things, we don't need a ton of cooldown either. So we don't need area damage and we don't need cooldown. And these are two stats that are usually sought after on every single piece. So it's going to make our itemization much easier. We do want attack speed. Attack speed is fantastic for this build, especially with the Brood of RNA, where each spider bite causes the target to take uh, an additional 1% damage from corpse spiders. This build is absolutely incredible at shredding bosses. If you notice, in our solo push setup, we don't even take Bane and the Stricken. We don't need it. You're just going to shred the bosses, no problem. This build versus one target is amazing. All right, well, let's get into it then. Spider Queen's Grasp, Court Spiders deal 800% increased damage and release a web that slow enemies. I mean, 800% increased damage, we obviously have to take this. Damage in and attack speed, no, notice how we, on the stats, notice how we haven't taken cooldown. And notice how we haven't taken area damage. If you were doing a normal season, you'd obviously just take a flawless royal emerald, like always. But this season, we will take a soul shard, the dregs of lies, which is the pet. This is the best thing for all pets. So this is what we want to take. Um, one interesting thing about this build is with elemental damage. So we're going to be doing physical damage because we're doing corpse spiders, widow makers. And usually on all of the builds that we take, we always want to take elemental damage on our bracers and on our amulet, right? And this is no different because we have them here as well. But on the weapon, 
you do have a choice if you look on the second line. Do you see where it says plus 50% damage as one of the possible rolls that we're looking for when we upgrade the soul shard? Um, usually, you want the elemental damage roll there because it gives you a, a massive power increase. However, we do not want it on this build. It's much better to take 50% damage because of Mask of Jerem. Pets deal 200% increased damage. These physical elemental damage rolls are merged with the 200% from Mask of Jerem. What that means is that physical elemental damage on this build is, provides a much lower benefit than on other builds that don't have this multiplier where all of these physical rolls are lumped into. So when we compare like a 70 or 75% damage or elemental damage roll on this weapon versus 50% damage, on this particular build, 50% damage is better. So that's something that you'll see different on some of the other builds. They'll probably usually take the elemental damage, but not here. Try to get the 50% damage instead. And so what are the other powers of this gem? You deal 25% less damage, but your pets deal 50% increased damage. That sounds like a win because our pets are dealing all of our damage. And every time our pet hits an enemy, our damage goes up by 1%, stacks up to 100 times, and then it drops down quickly. It's kind of like a Shenlong's, I guess. This is the ultimate pet gem. This is what we want for this build. Shukrani's Triumph. This was changed, and I think this is going to be used pretty much on almost every Witch Doctor build going forward. After the initial duration of Spirit Walk ends, it will continue to last until you attack three times or until an elite enemy is within 20 yards. Attacks while in the Spirit Realm deal 100% increased damage. So you deal double damage while you're Spirit Walking. Your Grave Injustice keeps resetting your Spirit Walk, and while you're Spirit Walking, you can't die. So this is amazing. You essentially just Spirit Walk, merry-go-round around the monsters to spread the infested thread, and then you're just moving into the Oculus Rings. You can't die, and you're dealing double damage. It's amazing. Int, crit, elite damage, and corpse spider damage is what we're looking for here. On the boots, we need the full set, obviously. We want it, int, vite, all resist, and armor. For the pants, we want depth diggers. Primary skills deal 100% increased damage. Corpse spiders are primary. Free double damage on the pants. Can't beat it. Int, vit, corpse spider, and we'll socket with intelligence. You can go for some survivability sockets if you want, if you want to go with either diamonds or rubies or emeralds for armor. Um, any of that would work. Compass Rose, attack speed, crit, crit is what we're looking for. We'll take Bane in the Trap for the 60% increased damage. Uh, while you're moving around, you stay alive. While you're standing still, your damage can double. So stand still when you're safe, move around when you're scared. Ring of Emptiness, attack speed, crit, crit. Simplicity strength increases the damage of our primary skills by 100, doubles our damage. Again, Corpse Spiders are a primary skill, easy mode and they're going to give us massive healing. So this build is amazing. We're constantly in the spirit walk realm. We have very good mobility. All the monsters are slowed. We have a ton of survivability from the set. The simplicity strength is healing us. I mean, oh yeah, life, life is pretty good here, quality of life. And our uh, non-fetish pets are doing 300% increased damage when they're affected by our locust swarm. No problem, we cast locust swarm, problem solved. Brood of RNA, corpse spiders deal double damage, and each spider bite causes the target to take an additional 1% damage from corpse spiders for 5 seconds. Kind of like our own Bane of the Stricken, so uh, we'll take that for sure. Int, Vit, Armor, and corpse spider damage is what we need. The gloves, Int, Attack Speed, Crit, Crit. On the shoulders, Int, Vit, area damage and cooldown. Again, if you don't want to take the area damage, you could consider taking it off to have zero. Um, but if you want to squeak out a little bit of extra damage, you could take that. If you don't want the area damage here, you could take armor, you could take life percent. It's up to you. On the helmet, int, vit, and crit. 
Um, normally in this socket you could either take a diamond for a bit of cooldown, you could even consider taking an amethyst for a bit of life, but in season 25 we will take the sliver of terror. Um, and what this does is whenever we have skills on cooldown, we're going to get massive survivability, 12.5% reduced damage, and we're going to get massive damage, 25 increased damage for every skill on cooldown. So essentially, just try to keep all of your skills on cooldown, and this gem in your helmet is just going to make you destroy everything. And then we can take the roll with the att attack speed and the critical hit chance. Again, attack speed is amazing for this build, and the crit obviously is going to give us a big, big damage boost, and you're going to be destroying. I think one of the other options on this, on this soul shard, if I'm not mistaken, is the ring of fire. You could get another copy of it with the ring of fire as well and mess around with that too. On the chest, we want Int, Vit, and Armor. We'll sock it with Toe Passes to deal more damage. Traveler's Pledge, Physical, Crit, Crit. Again, uh, remember, the physical damage rolls aren't as good, so if you find a Traveler's Pledge with like Attack Speed, Crit, Crit, or Average Damage, Crit, Crit, it's not as bad as it is on some other builds. We'll take Enforcer here. The damage of our pets is increased. Easy mode. And finally, Lakumba's Ornament, we, we want physical, int, vit, crit. Reduces all of our damage taken by 60% if our soul harvest stack is at least at 1. And we get an additional 2% for each stack of soul harvest. This was buffed this season, so it's giving Witch Doctors even more survivability. Now let's look at the skills. Horrify, Frightening Aspect is going to give us 50% additional armor after we use it. It's going to give us another skill on cooldown, by the way, for our gem. Piranha's Pure Nato is going to gather everything up. Enemies are going to take more damage, and it's going to help us infest them much easier and burn them down. Locust Swarm is required to activate our Ring of Emptiness, and we will take Cloud of Insects so they deal 25% reduced damage. If you find that you're completely immortal, you could probably take Pestilence as well, which would just spread it everywhere for you. Spirit Walk Jaunt is needed so we can deal massive damage from our Shukrani's Triumph. This is going to keep us alive and Jaunt is going to let us deal more damage because it's going to increase the duration of it. It's going to give us higher uptime on this 100% increased damage because remember this, this cooldown of attacking three times or when an elite is around you only starts after the initial duration of Spirit Walk ends the initial duration. So Jaunt increases the initial duration, giving you more damage. Soul Harvest Languish is going to keep us alive, and it's going to increase our armor by 10% per harvested enemy, and it's going to reduce their movement speed. And finally, Corpse Fighters, we obviously need this. Widowmakers is the rune of choice. It does the most damage. Other people were using Leaping Spiders. I tried them both, and I like Widowmakers a lot more. One of the biggest problems that I have is the spiders moving everywhere. I want them just to stay still and attack who I want them to attack. So I think Widowmakers is the choice here. Pierce the Veil is going to give us more damage. The increased mana cost don't hurt us at all. Confidence Ritual, you deal 25% increased damage to enemies that are close to you. We can hang out right by them. We'll be fine. Grave Injustice, as we already talked about, resets all of your cooldowns. And Swampland Attunement is going to help us stay alive. Echoing Fury is going to give us attack speed and movement speed from slaying enemies. Attack speed is amazing for this build. Mask of Jerem, our pets deal 200% increased damage. Talked about this earlier. It's an awesome multiplier, but it's lumped in with your other physical elemental rolls. And Ring of Royal Grandeur allows us to complete our set while using both Depth Diggers and Mask of Jerem. Now let's briefly look at T16, and this build is going to crush T16, so you can get rid of a lot of the damage here and just run around and plow. So first of all, we're going to swap our Legendary Shard in Season 25 for Anguish. This is just going to give us a lot more movement speed every time we deal poison damage. If you want to, you can get the poison damage roll on your actual weapon. That will work. But you can also just take Leaping Spiders, and that will work as well. So this is going to make us zip around a lot faster. Same idea with the Shard of Hatred. Your movement speed is increased by 50% is the main idea just to zip along here. 
we can take Squirt's and Rachel's Ring of Larceny instead of Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose. We can pick up a Boon of the Hoarder to move very fast. And really, this build doesn't even need a Gold Wrap. You'll be fine on survivability. We can take Warzeshian Arm Guards instead of Lakumbas. Again, we don't need survivability, just to move faster. We can pick up Zombie Dogs, which is going to give us a little bit of damage reduction, but with Fierce Loyalty, it's going to give us some movement speed. And we can also pick up Wormwood, which is going to automatically cast Locust Swarm for us. So we can just run around and throw spiders and just kill everything. So all of this should be able to zip forward and just destroy T16 for you effortlessly. If you are going to do solo speeds, or you know, maybe even group speeds, I'm sure this build would work for that as well. There are almost no changes to the build. One thing you should consider doing is you should switch to... The poison leaping spider so they can keep leaping with you and follow you and just deal damage as you're plowing through the entire rift that would mean that we would need to switch these to poison if you don't if you don't have the means if you don't have a backup set if you can't easily roll your physical to poison then don't worry about it but if you do have a backup set you could just switch it to poison for the speeds and also on locust swarm pick up the pestilence rune that way it spreads nice and easy as you fly through the map, that way you don't have to reapply this all the time to get the benefit from your Ring of Emptiness. And one final way to play this build, you might be invited as the RGK to shred bosses on the Corpse Spider build. So if you do that, you're going to want to pick up uh, Bane of the Stricken, that way you can kill bosses a little bit faster. We can drop Traveler's Pledge and Compass Rose for Squirts and Convention of Elements and just try to dodge the boss's attacks. So we can just get a little bit more damage out of there. We can take Bid, Big Bad Voodoo again so we can get more damage. And I think that's it. We'll take Creeping Death so our Haunt and our Locust Swarm are essentially always up. Just cast it once and then it's going and then you can just blast them with spiders. And the Furnace is also going to give you another 50% damage to crush these bosses. I actually think this might be a popular RGK uh, next season because the single target damage you're going to see on this build is pretty damn good. Now let's quickly look at the Paragon points. In core, you want to max your movement speed first, and then you're going to want to dump everything else into intelligence. If you're having trouble surviving, they put a little bit into vitality, but mostly it's just movement speed and intelligence. For offense, grab the two crits and then attack speed with cooldown last. On defense, grab armor first, then life, then all resist, then life per second. And then really, this utility thing is not very good for the Witch Doctor, or the Corpse Spider Witch Doctor. Don't really need area damage, definitely don't need resource cost reduction, and we don't need life on hit because we have Simplicity Strength. So I guess take the life on hit, and then the globes, and then the resource cost reduction, and then remember, you have a choice for area damage. It will give you some damage, but is it worth the lag to you? If you have no area damage anywhere, it might be worth it to not take any. That way you can just play lag-free and enjoy the game. All right, well, I think that pretty much explains it. And now that Sammy is here hanging out with me, let's jump into some footage and let me show you the power of this build and uh, how awesome it is. This, this build's pretty good. Let's check out some gameplay. All right, everybody, it's everybody's favorite time in the video. It's gameplay time. Here we go. All right, so first of all, what am I even doing here? This is a super baby witch doctor. This witch doctor's gear is terrible. I don't have a single augment. My legendary gems are rank 25, literally as low as you can possibly get. So I am showing you literally like a day one witch doctor. This guy sucks, believe me. And I did that very much on purpose. I want to have something relatable to you guys. If I come in with 10,000 Paragon, with perfect gear, la da la da la, well then, it's not relatable at all, right? So this witch doctor sucks, and we are going to do a GR 130 solo, no problem. We're going to crush it. All right, so what are we doing here? You spirit walk forward to where you find a very nice place that you want to fight. Then you cast your locust swarm. It's going to spread everywhere. 
and that is going to activate your Ring of Emptiness. Then you can use Piranhas to gather them all up. You always want to be activating your Soul Harvest, and you can use the Frightening Aspect. I'm taking Big Bad Voodoo right now for more damage, but you can use the Horrify Frightening Aspect for more armor anytime and to have another thing on cooldown. Just as long as you got something on cooldown, you're good there. And then you want to keep Spirit Walk active as much as you can. Because remember, you deal more damage while you're in the Spirit Walk realm from Shukrani's Triumph. And then you throw Corpse Spiders. Now, one thing that you'll notice I don't do very well in this video that you should do much more than I have done is you want to kind of do a merry-go-round around the monsters. You want to kind of be circling them like a vulture circling their prey because that would use my, in, my spider's infested web much more to get all of the monsters infested to deal much more damage. So that's probably the biggest critique of my gameplay here and how you could squeeze more damage out of this build. But even with a baby witch doctor, even without doing too much merry-go-rounding, you're going to see we're going to do this quite easily. And we're going to have a, a fun little surprise on the boss, which will be a fantastic lesson. All right, well, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it. Just keep your stuff on cooldown. Make sure everything is locust swarmed. Keep using spirit walk whenever it's up, especially to jump into an oculus ring just like that. And just let the spiders fly. You'll notice once we get down to like one monster, the spiders are just going to eat them alive. Look at this yellow. Oh, this is a 130 yellow elite. Did you see how fast I killed them? And I do not have Bane of the Stricken here. That's just pure witch doctor spider power. All right, so we have a conduit pylon. Remember, don't take conduits instantly unless you've pre-planned that if one's going to spawn, you're going to activate it. Notice how calm I am. I wait to kill some of the little itty-bitty trash, and then I click the conduit. The reason I did that is conduit has a maximum number of enemies that it can zap, which means if you pick up a conduit with a thousand enemies around you, well, it's just going to zap eight enemies here, eight enemies there, and nothing's actually going to die, right? But if you take the time to gather them all up, infest them all, and if you get rid of the little itty-bitty trash, it means that your conduit lightning will be zapping elites. And when it's zapping elites, good things happen. All right, well, we have a transformer festering. Holy God, this couldn't be any better. I was just laughing my ass off. I'm just trying to do a little demonstration on my witch doctor, and they give me a transformer festering. So this map couldn't possibly be better. And we're just going to destroy everything, really. I mean, this is going to this is going to be good. All right, well. Our conduit did a little bit of work there. Not the world's best conduit, but our strategy is exactly the same. Once again, we activate our Locust Swarm and put it on everything. We want to keep all of our skills on cooldown for our little gem in Season 25. Gather up the enemies with Piranhas. You, can, you need to keep your Soul Harvest stacks at 10 all the time by activating it near enemies. Use either Big Bad Voodoo or Horrify, whatever you're using for pushing, for more damage. Here we go. Now we're doing the right thing. We're kind of merry-go-rounding around the monsters. That's what you want to do. Just throw the spiders everywhere. Jump into the Oculus Ring once they've all been infested, and you can see that all of them are just dying. That's not area damage doing the work. Like in most other builds, that's just the... That's just the corpse spiders dealing dam equal damage to all infested enemies. All right, well, done a pretty good job here. And, man, I, I can't tell you how many pushes I've done in so many different seasons praying for a Transformer Festering and never getting it. Hopefully my little pinky toe is in the Oculus right there. Sometimes hard to tell. We got the little crit cloud from our scoundrel. That's another question a lot of times. 
Nowadays in the high-end pushes, the Enchantress is used because she gives you more cooldown reduction. But this build does pretty damn well with cooldown just out of grave injustice. So I'm very happy here just to keep vomiting spiders everywhere as the number of enemies goes down. The Witch Doctor the single target damage starts to shine. So I know this guy is about to be toast once his little friends die. See what else we have over here. You'll notice the first thing I do is I cast my Locust Swarm. You can see it's spreading everywhere. I'm throwing spiders everywhere to make my big spider move, hopefully infest everything, put webs everywhere. That's going to make them infested. It's going to make me take less damage. So I like to walk around and throw little spiders as I move just so I can stay alive. Getting a little bit wrecked here, but that's all right. No big deal. And we're blasting. Throw in the spiders. See, one thing that I really like about this build, and one thing that I think is going to help a lot of players, is the playstyle here is pretty darn easy. It's not very mechanically intensive. It's not hard to understand. And I think that's a breath of fresh air for the Witch Doctor. A lot of their builds over the years, in my opinion, have been very clunky or required these like really weird mechanics or play styles to do very well. Not this one. Keep your skills on cooldown, do a little merry-go-round, throw some spiders, and your bar can look like that even with a baby Witch Doctor. So, forward we go. Pull on everything, and if you've noticed, I haven't really been in too much danger at all. Haven't really uh, had too much survivability issues. So we're just going to pull everything, and the fact that I am was at least attempting to walk around all the monsters was good news. See the little spider connected between me and our friend? And another thing I think I guess you could do is you could stand in the middle and throw your corpse spiders in a merry-go-round around you, which would move your big spider around. That's probably not as effective as the other way, but that's probably another consideration and way to play. Maybe people, as this, as this build becomes more solved, will find more interesting ways to play with this particular set and might find some really good tactics here that just dominate. But we're already dominating pretty good just like this. Pretty happy with this, so... These monsters are worth a million, so I'm happy just to chill here and just watch them slowly die. The blues will die eventually. I'm not worried about it. They're already at half health. And again, if you actually really pump up your Witch Doctor, if you get perfect rolls on everything, if you actually level up your gems beyond level 25, um, yeah, you, you're, you're going to dominate. It's, uh, it's a very, very good build. All right, so, and by the way, I guess while we're at it, we should give a little bit of credit to Blizzard, right? They did a very nice job very nice job uh, rebalancing this set. I played it I played it in the first round of the PTR, and I was like, ah, uh, this thing has got some issues. Can we uh, make some changes? They took that feedback and other people's feedback to heart. They made some significant changes to how this build works, and it, it's just so much better. So props to Blizzard. They've been putting out some pretty good stuff, some pretty good stuff lately. Last couple of seasonal themes have been good. Some of their reworks have been quite, quite good. They, they're doing a good job over there. It, it really has to be said. I wish D3 would have launched like this in the beginning. It would be a much more popular game than it is now. It's okay, though. We're bringing it back. And uh, hopefully it's good news for Diablo 4. Now, when this boss spawns, I, I, want, I want you to pay attention to something very carefully. Saxtrus spawns adds at 75% health. I want you to notice the damage on how long it takes me to get Saxtrus from 100 to 75, and then from 75 down to zero. Okay, so watch, watch Saxtrus. Watch his health. Me versus Saxtrus. Here we go. Watch his health. I do not have Bane of the Stricken in this build. Look at this. He's getting shredded. Look at him. But now here come the ads. I locust swarm them. When they step on the web, they should be infested. 
But yeah. Look at my damage to Saxtrus now. Look, I mean. Did you, did you see how fast I got the first 25% down? And how bad it is when the ads spawn. Now, one thing I could be doing a little bit better, again, is I could be doing a little bit more merry-go-rounding. That would be good, and that would be better, and I should have done that. Because some of these ads are not getting hit. When they come into the middle and they get on the webs, they will be automatically infested. But the fact that my spiders are running everywhere and I have to run around everywhere to infest them all to deal equal damage, and my spiders are really, if you watch the spiders themselves, look at the spiders. They're just not attacking Saxtrus. There's so many other ads that even if I throw them on Saxtrus, they will run around and attack whoever they want. And just about now, we got the next 25% down. So actually what's going to end up happening here is we're going to fail this rift because we didn't have enough time uh, to clear it because we had an ad boss. So this is the one downside of this build. So if you have an ad boss, you need to try, first of all, to infest them all all the time with your merry-go-rounds. And also if they have mechanics like if you can get them to spawn their ads in one area, and then you can lure the boss away from the ads, you should absolutely do that, right? So this is a nice little lesson about ads with this boss, or with this build. Incredible boss killer, until a thousand ads start coming, distracting all of your spiders, and then it turns into a huge nightmare. So what I'll do now is I'll skip ahead a bit so you guys don't have to suffer through multiple minutes of me Wailing on Saxtrus. So we'll jump forward here. Now he's at about, I don't know, 10% health. And just want to wrap up this video real quick, I guess, guys. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys enjoy this build. I hope you guys have fun in season 25. I think this is a breath of fresh air for the Witch Doctor. Now they have two extremely good builds they have Mundanugu and Arashir. And I think some of the changes they made are also going to help some of the other builds, like Zuni Masa um, with the changes to Lakumbas and the Shukranis. A lot of the Witch Doctor builds just got better because a lot of those key pieces can be used in all of those different builds. Guess while we have a moment of time, I'd like to also give you a reminder. A lot of you guys are doing your Black Friday and your Cyber Monday shopping. Apex Gaming PCs has an amazing deal. The link is in the description of my video all the time. If you'd like to purchase a PC, if you use my code, get up to $250 off and you get free shipping. If you're international, then the shipping is cut in half. Some people have already purchased those PCs uh, from the sponsorship and they said that they've loved them. So check out Apex if you're looking for a PC, guys. Anyway, Saxtrus, finally, all we have to say to you is sayonara. Love you guys. I hope you guys like this guide. Let me know your feedback in the comments section. And Witch Doctors are on the rise for sure. The tier list is coming very soon, and we'll see exactly where they end up. But uh, Witch Doctors are, are going to be pretty damn good. Thanks, guys.